I'd like to introduce Miss Deborah Douglas. She's going to do the invocation and the blessing of the meal. Every head bow and every eye bows. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come right now, Father God, just to say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to have an annual meeting, Lord God. And Father God, we ask that you bless it for the keeping of your people, Lord God, that everything will go as it should go in the name of Jesus. Lord God, bless each director, bless each one that's assembled here today. Bless the food that has been prepared for us, Lord God, for the nourishment of our bodies and our souls. But dear Master, Look on counsel and agent to be what you have it to be. Not our will and not our way, but thy will be done, my God. And we be ever so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. All of these blessings we ask in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we have Mr. Edwin Deval. Devalier. Devalier. <laughs> Do the Pledge of Allegiance with us. If you can, can you please stand? Put your hand, your right hand, on your heart. Face your flag, please. I pledge your allegiance to the flag of to the United 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 States. States of America, for which the problem it will stand, for one nation under God, individual, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Cole, could you give us the roll call, please? Attorney Jennifer Mossa. Present. Ms. Jerry Booker. Yes. Representative C. Denise Marcel. Present. Dr. Derek Cole. Present. Councilwoman Shauna Banks. Attorney Brown. Brown. Attorney Steve Schilling. Ms. Patricia Williams. Ms. Jessica Griffin. Reverend Leo Cyrus. Father Andrews. <laughs> Professor Dorothy Jackson. Here. Miss Pamela Ann Mitchell. Here. Mr. Ra Jamie Robinson. Here. Chief Carl Dunn. Here. Miss Dorothy Thibodeau. Here. We have a quorum. <laughs> Miss Amar is going to greet everyone. Good evening, seniors. And our guests and our esteemed guests. And we got the judge in the house. How honored are we to have Judge Alexander in the house? It's, it's awesome. We're so glad to have you all. You all, it's our 46th anniversary for the Council on Aging. And so it's been a, uh, a whirlwind of 46 years, and we are so excited to be here. We have new board members coming on, and so, of course, as we know, today for us is Election Day, right? You excited to vote for some new board members? All right. So we got some more buses coming in, but normally I get up and I make this awesome speech, but this year I decided to try something new. Oh, I forgot, we have the monitors from the Governor's Office of Elderly Affairs here, our bosses. So let's let them see what we do tonight. Hey, Michelle. Okay, so we're going to play you a short video. Whenever you guys get ready, you can roll tape. Every day we get older, right? And every day somebody turns 60. And so in Baton Rouge, it's no different than any other city or um, community in the country. We are aging um, and people are living longer. And so programs and agencies like the Council on Aging are needed because we hadn't planned for people to live as long as they're living. Before the millage was passed, we truly were the best kept secret in town. 
because we were limited financially, we weren't able to market, people didn't know really what we did. Everybody knew Meals on Wheels, and we can meet some of the demand, but not much. But now that the millage has been passed, we're able to help more seniors, we're able to eliminate waiting lists, and now you call, we come, you get a service, we come in, we help your family, we help the seniors stay in home, at home as long as possible. Without the millage, the passing of the millage, that we would have had this and so many centers. Currently, we've opened six senior centers. We've opened a senior center at Antioch, brand new um, 30,000 square foot center. State of the art has all the amenity, pool tables, a living room, a walking path. They're doing yoga and Tai Chi. We were never able to go in that area of town because we just didn't have the finances. Ben Burge, Flanica, we out at Highland um, Road Park. Uh, Our Lady of the Lake at Bishop Ott, which is great. 362 units there. The seniors can come out, out of their apartment and have a place to get a hot meal, congregate, eat, talk about the day. Perkins Road at um, Kenilworth, they love it. Uh, it's a large group of seniors there. And so that's six centers that we're into now, and we're going to expand this year as well. Folks don't realize that we are a service delivery agency, so everything that we do is a service. And in order to help somebody, somebody has to do this service, homemakers. Somebody has to go in the house and clean the home. If we're cooking for somebody, somebody has to cook the meal. Somebody has to make the bed. So somebody has to de deliver the meal to the Meals on Wheels client. And so this gave us an opportunity to not only hire more people, but to impact our community. We went from uh, 42 staff members to 132 in one year. So not only are we impacting our seniors, but we're in impacting our community. We went from having four or five drivers to having 10, 12 drivers. We have uh, vans and we're going out and my drivers are making 50 and 60 deliveries a day. To Those are homes. It's somebody's life that you're impacting. And we went from delivering to 500 people to 1,600 people a week, you know, and so it's amazing to see the growth and they're still calling, you know, and, and it lets you know the need that's in this community. Over 50% of the seniors in this parish live at 50% below the poverty line. They live off of three to $500 a month in Social Security. And just think about it, that's all you get for the month. You gotta pay your rent and your lights and everything else. And if not for what we do, they would not be able to survive. And so we count it as an honor and a responsibility and it's our charge. The meals, the meals are hot and they're very good. And to furnish this for all these different uh, areas is, is pretty good and uh, they're uh, well-balanced meals. Monday through Friday, seniors can come in, get a hot meal, um, sit down with their, their peers, and talk about today, uh, talk about what you got going on. They love to talk about the stories during the meal. Then they play a good game of bingo or whatever activity they have for the day. But it gives them a place to go, a place to come, and, and, and an opportunity to get out of whatever you got going on at home. Well, the Lotus Pantry is a collaboration between the Greater Baton Rouge Area Food Bank, uh, us, and the USDA. It's just like a grocery store. You shop once a week to pick the items that you need, fruits, vegetables, household goods, and these are things that you can go home and take to add with what you have to make a meal. For the first time in the history of this Council on Aging, this community and this um, agency will have some assets. We are building a, what we call a supersized senior center in, in partnership with the city of Baton Rouge and um, the Office of Community Development. We're building a supersized senior center at 1701 Main Street where we're rehabbing a facility. It's gonna have a brand new pantry in it, state-of-the-art senior center like none other in the city or the state. It's um, gonna be about 30,000 square feet, everything new, um, and we hope to have that on, online in two years. We are also building an administrative building $5 million project, 
two blocks from this property in some blighted um, area in the, in the community. So we're going to bring a blighted piece of property back. We're going to build a two-story facility with administrative offices on the top and a commercial kitchen where we can expand the amount of seniors that we feed. Currently, we went from two, feeding about, making about 200,000 meals a year to 650,000 meals in one year between Meals on Wheels and Hot Meals, and we see that growing even more. And so we need a bigger kitchen where we can serve more folks. Uh, we also are doing a intergenerational facility uh, at Gus Young where we can have, we have a group of retired educators, um, principals and teachers, uh, teachers that and seniors, they're gonna come together, they're gonna work with the youth in our community, bring them together, teach them some, the, te the seniors are gonna teach the youth some wisdom and some manners and some, and the youth are gonna teach the seniors how to do Instagram. And they're gonna share knowledge, you know, and they're gonna get in there together and we're gonna try to bring these two generations together. We are very, very grateful that the Council on Aging provides these, these uh, opportunities for us. Come, join, have fun. Don't sit on that couch and become a potato. Be active, be an active senior citizen. Council on Aging. small glimpse into our future and when you get an opportunity if you if you look outside the renderings of the three new buildings are outside for you to see and we will have them um, rolling on the screens too we are really excited about uh, the new senior center we're gonna have a state-of-the-art senior center on Main Street with a pantry and a resting room um, fitness facility it's gonna have a mini growth store in it. It's going to have an adult daycare center in it. So if people are going into work downtown, they can drop their parents off. It's going to have care manager facilities in it and everything that you'll need. Uh, yoga rooms and arts and craft rooms. Uh, a nurse uh, practitioner will be there daily as well as security. And then two blocks back, we're also, we will also have a new administrative building, two stories, uh, two-story building with a brand new uh, commercial kitchen so that we can continue to do our meals. If you get an opportunity to look in the annual report this year, we went from about 200,000 meals to 630,000 meals in less than one year. And so we, we, we see in our future that we'll be doubling the, that by next year. And so we need a facility to uh, allow us to do that. And then we're doing an intergenerational center where we're going to bridge the two generations together, the youth and the seniors, in an old fire station that we're rehabbing. So look in, if you get a chance, look at the renderings uh, out in the hall. We have some great architects. One of our architects is here, Mr. Darrell Didier. He did, he's doing the admin building. Um, we have some other architects working with us on some projects. So just look for it. You all be patient. It's coming. We also have senior housing on the horizon. We're building a senior village. That's what you all asked for. You said we needed housing, and it's coming. It's coming. Affordable, decent housing where you can age in place, where you can be comfortable and safe. And so those things are, are coming as well. Now, I'm not going to take up any more time, but I just want you to know that this administration is working, and this board has been working um, on your behalf. Okay? Madam Chair, that's my presentation. Okay. Now we have to move on to the election of the board members. And now we'll have the election of the board members. Do I hear any nominations from the floor? I think he has to do his Dr. Cole is going to um, present the nominees that we have so far. This is the annual membership meeting for the purpose of electing board members. 
Board members can serve two consecutive terms for a period of three years each. Each individual who are not are no longer on the board are as follows. Ms. Jessica Griffin, Zachary Community, 2016 to 2019. The Board Development Committee has provided the board with a list of potential candidates. They are as follows. Dorothy Thibodeau, nominated for the unexpired nonprofit term from May 2017 to May 2020. Councilwoman Shauna Banks, nominated for the first term, Public Private Agency, May 2019 to May 2022. Chief Carl Dunn, nominated for the first term, Baton Rouge Community, May 2019, May 2022. Attorney Jennifer Monsant, nominated for the second term for Baton Rouge Community, May 2019 to May 2022. The Reverend Leo Cyrus, nominated for the second term, Public Private Agency, May 2019. 19 May 2022. We have prepared ballots to make the process easier. We will also take nominations from the floor. I'll give you a minute to open your ballots. Please listen carefully to each position.
Certificate of Arts in 2000 from the University of New Orleans. She is a 2003 graduate of Southern University Law Center, from which she received her Juris Doctorate. She was admitted to the Louisiana Bar State Bar in October of that year and clerked for Janet Annette LaSalle at the Family Court for the Parish of East Baton Rouge Parish. Therefore, she, thereafter, she has practiced general civil litigation, including asbestos litigation, plaintiff and defense personal injury work, family law, domestic cases, construction litigation, and she, uh, she is admitted to practice in all of the Louisiana state and federal courts. She's a member of the Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and American Bar Association, and she is the current board chair of the East Baton Rouge Parish Council on Aging, and has served as the secretary slash treasurer for the family law section of the Baton Rouge Bar Association. Areas of practice, family law, personal injury, bar admissions, Louisiana courts and all Louisiana federal courts, education, University of New Orleans, BA of Arts, 2000, Southern University Law Center, 2003. Are there any nominations from the floor? Pastor Leo D. Cyrus Sr., nominated for the second term, public agency, May 2019 to May 2020. Pastor Leo D. Cyrus Sr. is the pastor of the New Hope and Second Baptist Churches. He is married to Dolores Morris Cyrus. To that union, they have three sons, Leo Jr., Michael, and Kevin. They also have other proud grandparents of seven grandchildren. Pastoral history, New Hope Baptist Church, 1976 to present, and the Second Baptist Church, 1983 to present. Association history is a pre, uh, President Emeritus, Fourth, Fourth District Baptist Association in Baton Rouge from 2098 to 2009. Uh, President of the Greater, Baton, uh, Greater Louisiana Baptist State Convention, First President of the National Baptist Congress of Christian Educators, Education, Member of the Federation of Churches and Synagogues, Board Member of the East Baton Rouge Council on Aging, Board Member of the East Baton Rouge Redevelopment Authority, Advisor Council Member of the East Eden Park Elementary Schools and former member of the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board. Are there any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations from the floor? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Seeing that there are no other nominations, I'll close the nomination. Mr. Secretary, I move that the nominations be closed. Second. It has been moved and second. There's a nomination from the floor.
Are there any other nominations? The nominations are closed. <laughs> right. Can we get a motion? Mr. Secretary, I move that the nominations now be closed. Second. Second. It has been moved and seconded for the nominations to be closed. All right. We couldn't hear me. I'm about to announce it. Sean, get us back in this room. Madam Chair, we will have a write-in candidate for Baton Rouge community position, uh, Mr. Edwin DeValle. <laughs> for Baton Rouge community. Huh? For uh, 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 Jennifer Moore's seat. Uh, so you can write his name in if you want to consider him uh, for that seat. This is for the executive board. Okay, seniors, let's pay attention so we can get a clear understanding. All right? This is for the executive board and not the advisory board. So we're not, gonna, we're not planning the prom and the hold down and the property board date. And all of that, this is for policy making, okay? All right, just wanted to explain the difference in the two boards. So, Mr. Edwin, you can write his name on, on the first card with the four names. If you want to consider him, you write his name in on the fourth block. First card, down in the corner. And then if you, you can write his name in and check whichever person that you're interested in. Michelle, you get two minutes to introduce himself. We go. Okay, he wants to come up and introduce himself for two minutes. Uh, wait, stay right there. Stay right there. Wait. Did you bring the two? Two minutes. They think it's the plan to prom.
of the council. Everybody 18 up live in the parish that have a membership of the council on aging can vote. Complete your ballots and we're going to begin to pick them up.
So we want to go into the conference room and have the official board meeting. But we want to do, um, every year we have, uh, first of all, our chairwoman, Jennifer Moisan, has been our chairwoman for two years. And this is, she's going out as our chairwoman. So in the meeting right after this, we will elect new officers. And so every year we, um, we recognize our incoming five board members who have just officially taken their seats. And so we have something, Madam Chair, for our five new members. Um, the first award is for Mr. Jamie Robinson. Come on up, Mr. Robinson. We have an award for you for the work for us this year. We're getting an inspired term of members. So this is your
and he is a no-nonsense researcher and statistician. Dr. A has researched and created us a 40-year plan, and I don't know how many of us are going to be here for 40 years, but we got a plan like none other, off of his research and survey. Y'all, let's give it up for Dr. A. Quiet, but her work speaks volumes. She always has a kind smile to offer everyone. 
She is a member of the Meals on Wheels team and has proven herself to be very punctual, meticulous, and diligent with completing her tasks. She has developed a wonderful, a wonderful rapport within her department, and it's a privilege to have you, Emmy, on our team. Lotus Award goes to someone that, who's known as our C1 maintenance driver, Mr. George Romero, for the most dedicated and hardest work. George is one of our C1 drivers in our facilities department who ensures the safe delivery of hot meals to our seniors. Mr. Romero has only been with the agency for one year, but he's proven himself to be an asset. Since his inception, George has attempted to learn as much about every department as he possibly can. While he completes his task throughout the multiple departments within the building, he always has a new question to pose to that particular director or supervisor about their job. George never says no when asked to step up and assist others in other departments if necessary. George is gone and I'm still reading his name. He has stayed countless <laughs> to assist when the need arises. He maintains a positive attitude. Go ahead on, please. Better known as the gatekeeping police at the front desk, Ms. Denise Clark. Ms. Denise Clark, someday she won't even let me upstairs. Which, Ms. Denise Clark is always the queen of organization. She methodically handles the daily task of greeting seniors, visitors, receiving calls from the always overloaded switchboard. She receives multiple deliveries, tells me about my bad shopping habit, all while assisting the community service volunteers while capturing their, with capturing their and maintaining their hours. She is the constant professional with hospitality mindset and a heart for service. The queen is the new star, the actual ball. and her Meals on Wheels clients that is truly immeasurable. She taught us all that it is during the worst times of your life that you will get to see the true colors of people. She displayed that the strongest people make time to help others even when they're struggling in their own lives. We are truly grateful to have an angel of a person like her working with us. Her future is bright because her heart is service to others. and not have to worry about the outcome, this employee comes to mind. When you are working against a deadline and you need that one employee, you talking about me, who will insist and not complain regardless of how long it takes, this employee comes to mind. When you finally get to the point that there is very little resistance and more appreciation for the lesson being taught, for now they can finally see the bigger picture. This employee comes to mind. When you are looking for a true, hardworking, dedicated, and committed person, this employee comes to mind. This employee, the employee that keeps coming to mind is none other than Cynthia Cynthia Smith, <laughs> accounting specialist, Cynthia Smith. Come on, Cynthia. 
Simbali Garura Law.
Our next team player award goes to none other than Patrice Ryan, Assistant Director of Senior Centers. Patrice works so hard that she broke her foot. Patrice is the epitome of what a team player should be. She goes beyond the call of duty no matter what time. Sean calls her out at 5 in the morning, it's 10 at night, and she is there. She is always helping the seniors and this agency. None other, no better than the who that herself. Who that? She, she, she's still rocking the boot. Miss Patrice Bryant, Assistant Director of Senior Center. Team Player Award. Thank you so much. Give it up. All right. Her favorite saying is, boots are on the ground and let's get it in and get it done. Up next for the team player award is none other than our super social worker, director of social workers, Jonathan R. McGee. and commitment, he goes to his seniors' homes and gives them Mother's Day gifts on Sunday. We had one that she was having an issue with dementia. Jonathan got in his car for five hours and rode the neighborhoods until he found her. And he found her and took her back to her house. He just is, he goes above and beyond. He is on hotline with EPS. And we just love Jonathan. There is no other man like Jonathan. I'm telling you. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> the super social media. Next is a new category called the ABC Conductor Awards. So great, great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. The agency conductor award goes to people that are instrumental conductors behind the scene. They keep the agency's gears oiled, and they are the oil that keeps the machine of the company running. The EBR COA would not be successful if not for these conductors. Conductor number one, Ms. Eva B. Drew Pratt, Chief Financial Officer. Ms. Pratt is truly one of the hardest working employees in the agency. She does a enormous job maintaining the budget that has increased nearly 300%. She is always early to work and one of the last to leave. And, but best of all, you can count on her for wise counsel. She can be trusted to give you the no answer that you don't want to hear. <laughs> she is tried and true, the epitome of trust, truth, life, wisdom, and loyalty. Ms. Eva Jewel Pratt, my Ms. Pratt. Next conductor award goes to Ms. Charlotte C. Turner, director of Senior Center. She can be entrusted to maintain the ship and keep the operation flowing in our absence. And rest assured, you will receive a daily communication and telling us everything that happened while we were gone. <laughs> while filling in, she is still running the largest department in the agency, and she does it seamlessly. Charlotte is appreciated for her con consistent sacrifice to the agency and her passion for her seniors. Let's give it up for Charlotte. The last agency conductor is none other than my right hand, Trudy Bim Howard. No one is more cherished in the world than someone who likes the burden of another. Truly is the definition 
of life in the bird. She exudes grace, skills, mental toughness, problem solving, positivity. She always smiling, flexibility, desired outcomes and motion. She is truly the office general that holds the administrative team together. Truly, Bill Howard. she's gotten to this far. And I know she has more dreams to come for this agency. She wants to expand the centers that already exist, improve the centers that exist, add more centers. She's already removed the waiting list. She's building us some buildings. <laughs> and I'm very excited about her plans with regard to the, the senior community and people being able to live with each other and take care of each other. Yes. So, let me tell you, <laughs> I know she has more goals for herself and for this agency. She, but when she also when she started, she had a lot of ideas about how the staff should be treated. And she's worked very hard to make sure that we could give people raises, give people benefits, give them the things that they deserve, because hardworking people will stay with you if you treat them right. Tasha's first go-to is always, let's take care of the seniors, and number two is, let's take care of the staff. So this agency would not be what it is today without the continuous hard, hard work of Tasha Clark Amar. I noticed her dedication, and the seniors I know have noticed it. And now, the staff would like to celebrate you, because you always celebrate everybody else. 
So we have a special award for you, and I know everybody here, the board, the staff, all wants to thank you for all the hard work that you put in over the years. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. One more quick aside before we adjourn. I just want, this is the end of my tenure as the chairperson, and I just want to thank each and every board member. Y'all have made this a fun ride, an interesting ride. You have assisted me in ways you don't even know. Um, it, I've had to go back and look at my Robert's rules, but y'all are always there to back me up, anything I, I needed to do to help the agency, and I really appreciate your help over the years, and I want to thank y'all personally. And I want to thank the seniors for accepting me, for loving me, for hugging me every time I get to see y'all. Um, I really appreciate you allowing me to be your chairperson. Thank you. So with that, um, because we, we are um, traffic time, I do have an award for every one of my advisory board members. I'm going to let Charlotte is going to come up and hand out the awards to you all. I want to thank you all for a great year of your leadership and your wisdom, uh, advisory board members. I want to thank you all for advising me on what the prom should look like, what outfit we should wear. No, seriously, about we needed a millage because if not for you, we would have never gotten that millage done. So I want to thank you for your wisdom, your experience, and your knowledge that I rely upon that I bring back to this board all the time. And so Charlotte is gonna come up and call you, you guys' name, and give you all your award, because without you all, we, it wouldn't be no us. All of you seniors, so I thank you. Thank you, staff, for this award, and uh, we're gonna go and have our other meeting. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Make a motion. Second. All in favor. All in favor.